Folks, on Friday, we did something really cool here at Daily Wire. We released our first major motion picture, Run, Hide, Fight. It stars Isabel May and Thomas Jane. It is an edge-of-your-seat thriller. It's awesome. It's R-rated, edgy, gritty, complex, exciting. It's, it's the stuff that you want in a movie. You would watch it whether you're conservative or not conservative. And we've had amazing engagement. People are loving the film. For those of you who have watched and posted about it, I've really enjoyed seeing your comments and reactions. Our brand is building, and we are so excited to have new members in the Daily Wire community. We cannot wait to make more entertainment, like Run, Hide, Fight. So here's the question that we've been getting a lot from left, right, and center. Why are a bunch of folks who create podcasts and internet news releasing an action-packed thrill ride of a movie? Well, the answer is because we are in the middle of a culture war. Okay, the fact of the matter is that the culture is dominated by the left, all the cultural institutions. And it's not just that Hollywood is dominated by the left, it's that their content caters almost solely to the left. You'll have a tentpole flick every so often that really brings in the big bucks, but most of their low-level content is replete with leftist messaging. And the reality, again, is that the critics help exacerbate this problem. If you check out the gap on Rotten Tomatoes between what the critics think and what the audience thinks, it's often quite wide and usually where the movies are most political. So you need an alternative. You need a place to go where you can see entertainment that is not going to deliberately offend your values, where you can see a movie that is actually going to side with you and against a lot of left-wing tropes about the United States. The gap has been emerging in real time between Hollywood and the rest of the United States. Hollywood made Atomic Blonde, which was an attempt to respond to James Bond by basically just making James Bond a woman. Very often, the critics are just judging movies almost solely based on politics. Good example, the Jordan Peele movie Us. Now, the movie is like, okay, it's not a great movie, it's certainly not as good as Get Out, but they decided universally that it was very important for you to watch it because it had super important messages. So all the reviews said things like, well, the movie doesn't meet the high standards of Get Out. It's also a super duper important movie that you must see. All of America must see this movie. Why? Well, because of the messages of us, which is all about income inequality and racial inequality and all of Jordan Peele's usual sort of leftist messages. You see the same thing even with movies like Wonder Woman 1984. When Wonder Woman 1984 came out, audiences basically looked at it and went, this is not good. Except for the critics. We're like, you know what? Sure, it's not a really good movie, but it's so feminist. It's, uh, it's filled with just amazing girl power ideals. Okay, the, the fact is that Hollywood is constantly making entertainment that is designed to not only oppose your principles, but then they are praising it to the skies. And they do something else too. They do something else too that's worthy of note. If you don't like their movies, then the problem is you. It is not Hollywood. You are now toxic fandom. So if you watched Star Wars The Last Jedi and you thought that Rose was a super boring character because, let's face it, Rose is a super boring character. Or if you thought Last Jedi is just not a very good film, it was because you were a toxic fan who could not handle the wonders of Rian Johnson's completely failed reimagining of the Star Wars universe. If you watch Captain Marvel and you're like, you know, this movie, it's not amazing. It's not like horrible, but it's not amazing. The media treated you as though you were a toxic fan. If you looked at Ghostbusters and it was female Ghostbusters, lady Ghostbusters, and you said, this movie just isn't very good. Then the claim by the media was that you were a member of the toxic phantom. You just didn't understand the depths of female woke Ghostbusters. Well, what are you to do? I mean, as a person who enjoys entertainment, what are you to do? We can yell at Netflix. We can yell at Apple TV. We can yell at ESPN. But most of us still subscribe to one of those services. Well, one thing that you've been doing is you've been tuning out. Many conservatives canceled their Netflix subscriptions over the Cuties controversy. Cuties, of course, was a movie from France that seemed to glorify pedophilia. I mean, it, it had all of these uh, kind of insanely graphic shots of young girls dancing in extraordinarily inappropriate ways. Hashtag cancel Netflix was in the top trending spot on Twitter on September 10th, the day after the release of the film. Two days later, Netflix's cancellation rate in the United States jumped nearly eight times higher than the average daily levels recorded in August of 2020, reaching a multi-year high. A lot of people still are subscribing to Netflix, but a lot of people drop Netflix after cuties. A lot of folks in the sports world have decided that they are no longer going to be participating in viewing sports. I'm one of those people. I'm a huge sports fan. But if you look at the numbers on ESPN since 2013, they've declined markedly. People have been cutting the cord like crazy. I watch baseball. I watch basketball. I watch football. But this season, I didn't watch a minute of any of them because they decided in the middle of the Black Lives Matter protests to simply mirror a bunch of untruths about the United States and America's systemic racism. The idea was that if you didn't really want to see equality, throwing up an alley-oop for Black Lives Matter, that somehow you were a racist. They allowed all these woke messages to take over the entire sport and corrupt the sports so that you weren't actually watching sports. You were now watching MSNBC with a little bit of basketball in between. Forbes reported that NBA playoff ratings have been slipping as fans grumble 
the league has become too political. The Miami Herald study reveals reasons for enormous drop in sports viewership, including political dynamic. They say 70% of Republicans said they are less likely to watch live sports because of athletes' calls for racial justice. Well, no, it's not because of athletes' calls for racial justice. It's because athletes have been kneeling for the national anthem, suggesting that America is systemically racist and that all inequalities are chalked up to inequities, that the police are bad and racist across the board. Well, the reality is that the right, we can tune out, but it's not enough to tune out. We have to offer alternatives. The amount of time that people spend engaging with entertainment content on average dwarfs the amount of time they spend engaging with overtly political content. There is a reason that millions of people believe lies about conservatives. There's a reason millions of people believe lies about America. There's a reason that people look at you if you don't like these movies as though you're a bad person. They've been trained to do so by a culture that despises conservatives. You can see it in nearly every film. You can see it in virtually all TV. It is, it is a blanket statement about you. Hollywood is. They, and they won't cater to you. Most obviously, when they decided that Hillbilly Elegy was a terrible, terrible film because it took seriously the concerns of poor white people. So here's the thing. We need alternatives. It's not enough to just disengage. It's not enough to just turn off the TV. You need some place to go. The human brain wants narrative. The human brain wants to watch competition. We want engagement. And we need people who aren't political to engage with different sorts of content rather than disengaging entirely. We need to give people a different option. And so here's what Daily Wire is planning. Daily Wire will, in 2021, be jumping into the world of entertainment content. We're going to start by putting our stamp on TV and movies. We're going to make edgy and entertaining films that aren't trying to brainwash you every step of the way. The entertainment content is going to range from comedies and dramas that take you seriously and don't take advantage of your viewership to promote leftist causes. Okay? You're not going to be hit over the head with either right-wing or left-wing causes the way that TV usually does. And the fact is that if you've watched even a single episode of SNL, it is basically just at this point Jacobin Magazine with a couple of punchlines thrown in. A conservative who became the voice of a generation. Voice of Generation TBD. With a powerful message. Powerful message TBD. That's the man from long ago who stood up to Donald Trump. Looked just like him. Head TBD. Close above head, DBD. It's time to blow up the Death Star that is the left-wing monopoly on entertainment and to provide a replacement for your bucks so that you're not paying the people who want to see your values disappear. We don't just want to be producing entertainment that caters to your values. We want it to be provocative. We want to compete for the most important audience in the entertainment sphere, young adults. The films are going to be gritty. They'll be violent. We plan to push the boundaries because guess what? That's what people watch. The vast majority of conservatives actually want to watch the same kind of stuff everybody else wants to watch. They just don't want to be insulted in the process. Well, we are going to be dedicated to making that kind of content. Our content may offend some of the people in our audience. We can't win the culture war if we're not competing for the people we are attempting to reach. It's not going to help to make a conservative more conservative. We need to make moderates more conservative. We need to take liberals and we need to allow them to see a conservative point of view through a medium that is going to attract them and isn't going to repel them. But this Sunday, you can watch me talk about this with Dallas Sonier. He's producer of Run, Hide, Fight. He creates content from this point of view too. That's why we join forces on Run, Hide, Fight. So I'm excited about 2021. I think you should be too. Conservatives getting into the entertainment space, it's something conservatives have talked about for a very, very long time. We've expended hundreds of millions of dollars on white papers from think tanks. We've expended billions of dollars on elections. But until we engage in the culture, we're just going to keep losing. My mentor, Andrew Breitbart, he used to say the culture is upstream of politics. If we never engage in the culture war, how do we expect to win the political wars? We are getting involved. We want you to be involved too. We need your help. This content is not exactly cheap to produce. We need your help to let the word out, let people know that you enjoyed Run, Hide, Fight, and that you want to get engaged with the culture. We plan to compete in every arena because the left has spent the last 50 years taking over nearly every institution in American life. The only way that we're going to be victorious is if we push back all at once in every perceivable area. And entertainment is just the first step. So we hope you'll join us over at dailywire.com and join the fight for the culture.